Enzo and Cass, what's the first thing you think of when they come to mind? Is it the charismatic promos of the loudmouth Enzo or the imposing seven-foot force that was Big Cass? It's more likely you remember them for their surprising and abrupt downward slide they had after splitting up. Hell, if you don't follow anything outside of the WWE wrestling bubble, you may have forgotten about them altogether. But just seven years ago, they looked like the tag team that could be one of the all-time greats. You know, like the Hardy Boys or the Dudleys, Heart Foundation or the New Day or the Usos. But that never came to be. And if anything, it was the total opposite. So how did it go so wrong for what seemed like the perfect duo on screen? For that, we have to go back a decade to their NXT days, WWE's developmental territory where new characters are created in a wonderful bubble in the Orlando area. Also, Enzo Amore grew up with a wrestling school a walk away from his house and he only really started wrestling in WWE. A unique way to break into the business by just trying to cut promos and be a personality that got their attention. At the time, it didn't matter because he had the gift of gab. And if you come in with that, sometimes that can really help you a lot in a big way. NXT was for development and he had something that could be developed right from the get go. Together, Enzo and Big Cass built themselves up as a personality team in a roster made up of hardcore, legit, bell-to-bell -bell performers. They stood out because it was personality first and action later on, and they connected with the audience right away. Although they never technically won the NXT Tag Team titles, their three years there on the brand were incredible. The response they received from the first NXT TakeOver Brooklyn crowd was probably one of the biggest ones that made the big brass say, hey, we need them up here on the main roster. That reaction was huge. Yeah, it makes you ask, how you doing down there when you should be doing something up here? Even then, a young Carmella joined their ranks, but when it was time to get called up, Triple H had the foresight to separate her from the act, probably sensing that she would benefit from being away from them. And how right he was. It went as far as WWE separating Carmella from her boyfriend at the time, Big Cass, by putting them on different brands in 2016. And if you know anything about WWE, they usually never really separate real life couples by brand unless there's some good reason. And we didn't know what that reason was at the time. Either way, Enzo and Cass's debut on Monday Night Raw after WrestleMania 32 got an insane response. When you talk about those post-WrestleMania Raw pops, this was one for the ages. It didn't matter that the legendary Dudley Boys were in the ring, it was the perfect crowd to introduce to the larger WWE audience that may have heard about the rumblings of these guys and now got to see them and it was an instant sensation. Just like the fans of theirs in NXT had predicted, they were a big breakout act for WWE. They were quickly shot up from being in a tag team title number one contenders match and faced their fellow NXT alumni, the Vaude Villains. Unfortunately, that match at Payback ended in a default win for the Vaude Villains after Enzo Amore suffered concussion after taking a nasty collision with the bottom rope. Yeah, after getting thrown by Simon Gott, a man who had less than flattering things to say about Enzo Amore in the years after he left WWE. I attended this match live at the Allstate Arena in Chicago and the weird sound of the crowd when they knew that Enzo was in a bad spot truly sucked the air out of the room. It felt like this was gonna be their big breakout moment. They had so much momentum that suddenly got lost on this sudden injury. Enzo had been given the reputation of not being the most technically sound wrestler. Yeah, he leaned on the charisma, and this concussion was a clear freak accident, not exactly something you could blame on his in-ring skills, depending on who you talk to. WWE used this time to establish Big Cass as a presence as a single star on Raw, and it became abundantly clear early on that they would eventually have big plans for the big man. Hey, he was the big guy in the land of big guys, right? There was even some success there, and he looked like a bona fide superstar hardly a month into his Raw run. 
He was put up against Chris Jericho in the main event on Monday Night Raw within his first month, and although the match technically didn't happen thanks to Dean Ambrose having an assault, it was a great spot for Cass to be in. Even when Enzo eventually returned, business went on as usual. They were first making attempts at the tag team titles, and when that failed, they went on to assist John Frickin Cena in a battle against AJ Styles in the club. What an endorsement. They teamed up with Cena, the GOAT, to beat the club at Battleground 2016. With a fresh coat of Cena sauce endorsing them, they then pivoted into a feud against the two hottest stars of the post-draft Raw in 2016, Kevin Owens and Chris Jericho. Those two were on fire at the time, Jericho giving on his list, Kevin Owens having absolute banger matches, so were Enzo and Cass, so it felt like a great combination of strong elements running right at the same time, which is why it made perfect sense when the two teams faced off at SummerSlam. Zoe and Cass didn't win on that occasion either, but it didn't really matter. They were still really, really over getting huge reactions on some of the biggest shows and being put in key spots. You don't have to win every match to be a winner in the eyes of the fans. They still had a lot of momentum, just maybe not some W's in the right column on their record. Although the rest of the year wasn't as hot for them as that period between April and August, they were eventually in prime positions to win the Raw Tag Team titles at WrestleMania 33 in what was initially a fatal four-way match. That of course changed. The deck got shuffled for the tag teams in WWE when that music hit and the Hardy Boys made their anticipated, long rumored and reported return to WWE in an all time great pop. And they won the ladder match that happened that year to become the tag team champions. Yeah, sorry, the Hardys coming back. I mean, the Hardys come back and they gotta win those titles. Sorry, Zoe, sorry, Cass. This unfortunately though actually marked the start of their downfall, since by this time they had lost some momentum. I mean, they were still in the mix, but they weren't at the top of the pile of tag teams. And now with the Hardys coming in, it meant that there was a shuffling. The Bar, a great tag team made up of Cesaro and Sheamus, was putting on incredible matches, while Enzo and Cass, sadly, weren't exactly seen as the guys that went out there and had five-star matches. They went out there and had great segments with some strong matches. But for whatever reason, WWE decided that it was time to split the two up. It just felt like maybe if they stuck in there a little bit longer with them, it would have turned around. But you know, that's just retroactively thinking about it. Enzo's reasoning for the split was that the higher ups in WWE had different creative visions for them and wanted them as single stars, even though they hadn't really scratched the surface or broke through the ceiling as a tag team just yet. It's worth noting, they were still really, really over. They were among the top merchandise sellers in WWE. That's a fact, and you can't teach that. You can, you can sell it and put it on a t-shirt. The lack of vision unfortunately led to a rushed and panic breakup angle just a month after WrestleMania, starting with Enzo getting attacked by an unknown assailant on Raw. Corey Graves on commentary revealed that the assailant must be none other than Big Cass himself, leading to the most underwhelming breakup feud in years. You think this would have meant more? While the intention may have always been to make Cass a big single star, they didn't do exactly a great job out of that, giving him the most generic theme song in existence and putting him in horrible squash mashes on that one-off pay-per-view named Great Balls of Fire. That should have been it for their feud, but Enzo found himself getting involved in Big Cass's big man feud against The Big Show. At SummerSlam, when Cass faced Big Show, Enzo was suspended above the ring in a shark cage. He slipped out and was conveniently taken out by Cass seconds later. What was the point of the shark cage anyway? And more importantly, a bigger question, why on earth was WWE so obsessed with shark cages around this time as a gimmick? 
When Enzo faced Big Cass in a huge personal grudge match, these two former tag team partners the next night on Raw, the injury bug hit again, and sadly, Cass tore his ACL and was out of action for the foreseeable future. Once again, just bad luck, bad timing, as the story may have been going in a positive direction. It never really got to even turn that way. WWE decided to finally turn the loudmouth Enzo into a heel, a villain, and thrust him into the cruiserweight division, probably with the hope that he would bring more attention to that brand, which was all built around bell-to-bell -bell performers, and he was very much a character performer. All right, I'm seeing what they're doing here. This makes some sense. He did that to a degree, but not as much as they may have intended. At this time, WWE had a strong crop of cruiserweight wrestlers who could put on absolutely great five-star matches, but they needed that character player, and WWE's bosses felt it was right to pivot Enzo as the new hot star on that brand, and making him a heel made it easier for these other wrestlers to go after him, and he quickly became the cruiserweight champion. The logic is there, it makes sense, and 205 Live needed a shot in the arm at the time anyway. They even got a main event segment on Raw, where Enzo Amore roasted all of the cruiserweights for their lack of relevance or personality. In the final segment of Raw, this was pretty rare for 205 stars to be featured there. What he probably didn't want you to know was that the segment happened to be the lowest viewed part of the entire episode that week. Maybe not the thing you want to remember. And the problems, unfortunately, would keep rolling in. While Enzo's mouth may have gotten him into the top spot in the cruiserweight division, it was causing a whole lot of issues backstage. Let's just put it this way. Have we ever actually seen anyone defend Enzo around this time? Later in 2017, Enzo found himself getting kicked out of a tour bus in Europe by the locker room leader Roman Reigns, reportedly. It should be prefaced here that if Roman Reigns, who's considered one of the chillest locker room leaders that WWE's ever had, if he's the chillest and he's kicking you off the bus, it's not for a good reason. If you were to hear from the horse's mouth, Enzo said that he got into an altercation with another superstar unnamed and that Roman Reigns made him change buses as a result. But a report from the Wrestling Observer Newsletter said that Enzo had a lot of pre-existing heat on him within the locker room and that this was just the straw that broke the camel's back. Bad timing again. The report stated that Enzo was talking extremely loud on his phone, allegedly stating negative things about the wrestling business while simultaneously bragging about how much money he was making. The common perception of Enzo was him being a loudmouth bragger, both in his character and maybe in real life. JBL, on his Stories with Briscoe and Bradshaw podcast, said that Roman Reigns even kicked Enzo out of the locker room for disrespecting the business, supposedly relating to a story where he got some uninvited guests backstage to the show. On the WWE Network series, Bring It to the Table, JBL also said that when an entire locker room turns on a wrestler, they're basically done for in the business. JBL named The Miz as one of the only men ever to survive that type of reputation and described Enzo Amore as a man having a lot of problems with the rest of the world. If you're wondering about Big Cass at this point, he had a little heat on him too, but it wasn't anywhere near as bad. Unfortunately for Big Cass, his time on the shelf from the ACL injury proved to be pretty bad for him in his personal life. While facing major issues with depression and alcohol abuse, even admitting to drinking an entire bottle of Tito's vodka every day, it led to a falling out with his girlfriend Carmella, despite buying a house together and signaling a larger commitment together. Even Carmella, who stood by his side for years, had to let go of the relationship, and this was likely even a bigger source of sadness for Cass. Things just weren't going well. And as the new year began in 2018, Enzo Amore's WWE career would take a sharp and very quick nosedive, both in the ring and in his personal life. In the span of just 24 hours, he was accused, and we're emphasizing accused, of a sexual assault, suspended and terminated by WWE. 
This all occurred on the Raw 25th anniversary show where he was supposedly going to have a pivotal role in that special show. Fightful reported that at the time, the reasoning for Amore's dismissal was not the allegations themselves, but the apparent fact that he was aware of the legal situation prior and did not inform the company in a timely manner. For context, it is worth noting that ESPN reported in May of 2018 that the Phoenix Police Department stated, The case has been investigated to its fullest extent while working with the Maricopa County Attorney's Office. The case has been closed. This would not preclude the case from reopening should new evidence come to light. But whether or not the allegations had any validity, it was simply the way that Enzo responded to them internally in his way that he did business with WWE thereafter. Enzo seemed to get a lot of chances and rubbed too many people the wrong way, whether it was his fellow wrestlers or someone just simply working backstage. To add to that, he didn't even progress in the ring all that much since his debut five years prior. But that really isn't as important as comparison to the issues he had outside of the ring. He had enough character, enough charisma to really continue to be something special. Big Cass was brought back into the fray at the Superstar Shakeup in April 2018, and WWE could finally focus on this seven footer as a single star like they reportedly always intended. And he came back at the right time. Daniel Bryan was now cleared for in ring action, and this was going to be his first singles feud following his big triumphant return at WrestleMania 34. It was a testament to how highly WWE thought of him. But from a creative standpoint, the story was just not good. Pretty underwhelming considering the players and the timing. Big Cass was nothing more than a high school bully who targeted Daniel Bryan for his height. Never forget that ridiculous promo on Miz TV when Big Cass said he knew what it was like to be Daniel Bryan, short and getting bullied all the time. So what did he do? He grew up and became a bully? Oh. Yeah, and that one was also controversial because despite being specific, Big Cass disobeyed that edict and kicked him anyway, getting a lot of heat backstage. Cass would later recall the segment and labeled it as a, quote, horrible mistake from his end. While he thought that he was going to get mega heat for attacking a little person impersonating Daniel Bryan, the crowd laughed instead. And that was when he realized he effed up. And that's exactly what they call going into business for yourself. A big no-no when you're in the biggest wrestling company in the world that is spending thousands of dollars on the production itself. Yeah, you don't do that. Cass not only lost to Daniel Bryan once they had their first premium live event match after returning, but he tapped out to him again the next month at Money in the Bank. Two days after this, he was released from WWE. Following his release, there was a whole flurry of reports about different incidents with Big Cass that got him the wrong kind of heat. There was one story of him blowing off Kevin Dunn's request to rehearse for his promo on SmackDown. In case you didn't know, Kevin Dunn is basically Vince McMahon's right-hand man for most of his career and the head honcho of WWE's TV production. It went over time. There was another report of him being inebriated in public as a result of alcohol intoxication on a tour, while another rumor surfaced that during a separate European tour, Cass was locked in a bathroom because of a faulty lock system, and somehow, thinking it was a prank, he allegedly broke the door open. The result of this was other superstars having to do their business in the bathroom minus the door while WWE had to pick up the bill on Cass's behalf. Once again, a string of problematic behavior led to Cass's release. And that was the end of Enzo and Cass's story in WWE. It should be noted that their responses as to why they were released couldn't be more different from one another. While Enzo basically blamed everyone but himself and the circumstances for his release, Big Cass has taken full responsibility for his actions, 
and has even proven to be a lot better than people expected about it. We're not saying that Enzo has any right to be angry about his release from WWE, but let's be real. The number of people that he rubbed the wrong way probably contributed to his dismissal from the company. And while Enzo has been enjoying his life away from wrestling, periodically embracing the independent wrestling circuit, putting out a clothing line, and producing hip-hop music, Big Cass has chosen a more humble approach. In 2019, he partnered up with Diamond Dallas Page to release a video talking honestly about his struggles with alcohol and depression. And what he said really resonated with fans. I'm sitting here right now and telling you that I should be dead with the amount that I drank and the seizure that I had. I shouldn't be here. If anybody out there suffers with depression or anxiety and you're hiding it because there's a stigma out there that you're weak, you're not weak. Whatever it is, you need to go seek help. He described it as one big explosion that ultimately cost him his dream job. And this was following a seizure that he had during an independent wrestling event in 2018. That moment turned his life around. He's always known that the goal is to get back to the big time of WWE or somewhere else. And to do that, he needed to get help and take things one day at a time. Enzo essentially got himself blacklisted from WWE when he disguised himself as a fan and tried to cause a scene at Survivor Series 2018 in the seats, getting kicked out. Enzo and Cass did have a brief reunion of sorts in 2019 on the independent circuit, but most notably at the world's most famous arena, Madison Square Garden, when they interrupted a tag team match on Ring of Honor and New Japan Pro Wrestling's G1 Supercard show. This was supposed to lead to some type of angle within Ring of Honor, but that never came together. In 2019, when TalkSport interviewed Triple H, they asked him about the rumors of Enzo and Cass possibly rejoining the company. His answer was very frank, but a lot more brutal. Triple H said he personally told WWE's public relations department to shoot down Enzo and Cass return rumors and said that there was, quote, absolutely zero interest. The game even took a shot at Enzo by saying, congratulations to Enzo. I'm sure spreading rumors is working well for him, but I want no part of it. Ugh, how you doing? But for Big Cass, it's a different story with a completely different feeling. He seems to have largely gotten his life together and has found a home on the other big televised wrestling show, All Elite Wrestling. Under the name Big Bill, he's teamed with another great young superstar in Ricky Starks and even won the AEW World Tag Team Championships, making it the first championship he's won in a major promotion since he signed with WWE in 2011. Just imagine that, 12 damn years and a whole lot of challenge and tribulation along the way. He's reportedly been in a relationship with AEW's Lexi Nair, the stepdaughter of DDP, for a couple of years now. They've been engaged, and Ricky Stark's reaction when he found out about the relationship live in a media scrum was hilarious. It's hard not to support somebody like Cass when a seven foot tall man who seems to be the embodiment of machismo talks so openly about his struggles with depression, there's just a relatability to the common man, let alone the average wrestling fan or just anyone who can embrace this story. Given the trajectory of both men having been released from the WWE within a short time between each other, it seems rather clear between the two men, Enzo and Cass, as to who could potentially have a run in WWE again. Yeah, just potentially. Whether he ultimately returns or not, Big Cass's main focus will always be on prioritizing his physical and mental well-being. And since he's done so well at taking it step by step, it wouldn't be a surprise to see him eventually come back to the WWE. Though he's kicking ass right now in AEW, and good on him for doing it. He certainly earned the chance to prove to people who believed in him all those years ago that they were right about his potential. Thanks for watching.